Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Success to Significance Life After Breaking Through Glass Ceilings. I'm your host, Jen Duplessis, and today my guest is Stephanie James. And Stephanie and I have actually had about an hour and a half conversation, I think. And we, we said, gosh, we should have recorded that conversation because that would have been our podcast, right? Yeah. Um, and Stephanie, Stephanie is a transformational life coach and a psychotherapist, a dynamic public speaker. She's a published author. Uh, she is a filmmaker and um, she has a message that's so powerful to help others um, spark their own internal, right? Uh, best, I guess to own it, to, to spark your own internal spark, which sounds redundant and that's my fault, um, to lead their best lives to the next level. She is has an unrent, um, unrelenting commitment to help others actualize their vision and dreams and create tangible and lasting results, which is one of the first things I'm going to be asking you about is like, how do you do that? Um, she's uh, her worldwide weekly radio show and podcast, The Spark with Stephanie James is, um, is a show created to bring you the very best in the field of psychology science and spirituality and take your life to the next level. She has one book published right now. She's going to talk about her next one, but her, uh, the book that she has published now is called the spark igniting the best life. So boy, I had a hard time getting through that. I don't know what happened there, Stephanie, but welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm so Thank sorry you. about that. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here with you, Jill. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, we're both, well, I know you're a transplant to Colorado and I'm a trans transplant out of Colorado, but that's sort of the synergy that we have. You're sitting in the town that I went to college in. So that's exciting in Fort Collins. Um, so I want to, you know, I really just want to start with, um, you know, and I, of course, you know, I love all the spark stuff because my company is called Kinetic Spark and I have a program called Ignite. And um, so you and I have a lot in common there, but I really want to dive in deep and find out a little bit about you first, and then I want to talk about how you actually transform people um, in this area, because this is a problem right now, and especially now, don't you feel like everybody's sort of dull and we mm -hmm. need a spark? So yeah. tell us a little bit about you and how you got into this. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I've had 30 years mm -hmm. in the personal development and, and growth field, um, which is so hard to believe when I think of it now. And, and my career took many different turns as far as working in schools, working in adolescent, adolescent psych hospitals, um, directing a cognitive behavioral therapy program for seriously mentally ill. I mean, it's, you know, I've just done the gamut. In the last 16 years, I've been in private practice as a psychotherapist and transformation coach. And, you know, Joel, the, the thing that I feel like I'm saying to a lot of people lately is like life begins at 50. At least that's <laughs> when the sparks really ignited in my life. I, I had lots of different challenges and we can talk about that later as a kiddo and how that message, you know, mm -hmm. I think I've really lived about how we can grow and befriend ourselves, how we can truly have a loving relationship with ourselves. But I'd have to say, you know, it was almost five years ago when I was sitting in my office and I was sitting there thinking about how do I get back into radio? Because I've been a guest on a radio show and a couple of times. And all of a sudden there's this knock on the door and this gentleman walks in and he says, hey, have you ever thought about doing your own radio show? <laughs> and I about came out of the seat. I was right. so excited. Yeah. And um, it ended up, so he ended up being my first producer. He worked here at the local radio station and that's how the spark with Stephanie James came to be. And it was from that moment, things just began to happen. Mm -hmm. And I always say a, a part of that journey was really um, right before all of that, I had a huge moment of surrender, which um, had been dealing with my daughter's addiction for 10 years. Yeah. And it was literally one of those moments where I was brought to my knees, where I had put her in treatment for three months. I had taken her three and four-year-old sons to take care of during that time. And there was a night, you know, and I'm doing my full private practice and everything else going on. And I would come home at night and I would just be exhausted. Yeah. And there was this true moment where I, I had my head against the nightstand and they were in these two twin beds. I'm 
rubbing their backs, trying to get them calm down because they just came out of chaos and they were oh, yeah. Yeah. struggling. And, and so really getting them calm down. And I went to my bedroom and I was just so mad, Jill, at that moment. I was, you know, I was like mad at God and mad at life. And, you know, I didn't want this to be happening. And then something just came over me and it was just like, you can't do this. You know, this is not for you to fix. This is not for you to control. And it was truly this moment of just surrendering. I get the goosebumps still, you know, to the divine. And once I, I did that, I, I fell asleep and woke up the next morning. I think I had the best sleep I'd had in years. And it was very shortly after that, that the, that knock happened, that fateful knock happened on the door. Yeah. And that opened up this huge world to me of just meeting people that had been my personal, you know, I, in psychology and spirituality and science, you know, my gurus and people I looked up to. And then from that became the events and filmmaking. And, and it's just been an amazing journey. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I mean, our family's going through something a little difficult right now. And, uh, you know, it's the fact that uh, it, I just want to know what happened, what happened on the other side of that, because uh, when you uh, say, you know, you kind of surrender to you can't control it, you can't really do much about it, but you still have family to contend with, you still have the semantics of what happens, you know, and how life happens. How did you work through that part of it? Because a lot of people are working through those things too now. Um, and I'm not saying that they, you know, are, and of course this podcast isn't all about psychotherapy and, and stuff like that, but, but uh, there is transformation happening. And a lot of times transformation is um, not letting go of something behind you, you know, it drags you down. It's an anchor that doesn't allow you, but it's that next step that everyone struggles with is I don't know what to do. So how did you get through that? Or how do you recommend that people get through that when they do make that decision, they have that tipping point? Yeah, great question. You know, I feel like one of the quotes to me that just really <clears throat> resonates with me is Michael Singer, who did the untethered soul. He mm -hmm. has a quote from his book on surrender, actually, that says, suffering is whenever we want the present moment to be anything other than it is. Mm, mm -hmm. And, and for me, that was absolutely true. And I think right. that that's what causes us a lot of anxiety. Yeah. We have this image of what we think control is. And the truth is, you know, we, we don't have control. We, we have predictability. We like predictability in our lives, but yeah. where we create anxiety, as we know, is when we do the what if game. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about what could happen tomorrow and what, oh, what if this happened? Or 20 what if that steps happened? ahead instead of right to what's in front of us. Yeah, exactly. And the same thing if we're ruminating about the past, I wish things were different. I have these regrets. We don't have any power then. Mm -hmm. What we have is, I don't know why the doorbell's ringing. I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay. We'll stop the recording. So we'll pause sorry. it. So Jen, you know, I think what, what really happens is because we get so wound up about whether it's what's happening in the future or ruminating about the past, what we miss is that the power is really in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when we can bring ourselves here, yeah. I think, you know, part of, part of what surrender means to me too, is that we accept what's going on in this moment. So it's, as we do that, it's like, we just drop, we can drop the fear, we can drop the anxiety. And we actually find this well of resourcefulness inside of us that can be as simple as literally accessing our own breath, taking some deep breaths mm -hmm. and really being right here. Cause when we're here, we're much better able to deal with whatever is in front of us. Yeah. Our mind's not spinning. We're not creating extra anxiety. Yeah. It's funny that I used the word anchor a few minutes ago saying, you know, someone's pulling you down, but then this is an anchor too. This is a different type of anchor. And, you know, I do a lot of breathing throughout the day and I feel that, um, you know, I'm, I'm very centered. I'm very anchored throughout the day and that really does help. And so as a result, I don't experience as much anxiety but I had no idea that I, I mean, I knew that I was doing this, but, but I definitely don't experience anxiety like a lot of people do. And especially the sort of the hurricane that's going around me right now, you know, with a lot of different things um, in our family and, and uh, you know, and I feel like I'm really anchored in and, and it feels good, but I got, I'm in the eye of the hurricane. Right? <laughs> in yeah. the storm. 
Um, okay, so thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and and so uh, you know, as people are coming out of COVID, because we're still talking about COVID, you know, it still has. It's it's like now we're just now we're seeing what the results are. You know, the band aids come off now. You know, we we did all the treatment while we were ha- it was happening, and now the band aid or slash masks have come off, right? And now we're seeing the scar that we have. And I think that that's, that's what um, I'm seeing mostly with people is now, what do I do? You know, what is my transformation here? How do I, um, you know, do what I really wanted to do in my, in my life? So I want to talk about your message, right? That you had said, you know, that you deliver a message in a powerful way to help others find their own internal sparks. So how do we find that? Mm -hmm. And then create their best lives to the next level. You have an unrelenting commitment to help others actualize their visions and dreams to create tangible lasting results. So let's figure that out. We want to create a spark that says, get out of my way. It's kind of like my book, right? And my television show, tell me I can't <laughs> yeah. like create that spark, right? And then get out of my way. But how do you help people really actualize their vision? I'm not real sure I understand that. Sure. Yeah. These are great questions. You know, I think one of the things that I talk to people about that I think is such an essential message is that the essence of who we are is that spark. So it's not something we have to go outside of ourselves to get. It's not something we have to earn. It's actually, this is not an outside job. It's an inside job. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my experience in working with people and, and of course my own journey is that that essence of us, you know, that is the spark that can't be blown out. You know, we would say water can't wet it, you know, fire can't burn it out. It's literally, it's there. So no matter what storms are raging around us, that's there. And unfortunately, what what happens to all of us at some point is that life circumstances, you know, whatever it is that happens that can be negative can kind of cover that up. It's Mm -hmm. almost like there's layers. And so we have to excavate Mm -hmm. that spark within us like it's there. And so I think that's that's an important piece for people to really get in touch with, because I don't care who it is. I mean, I've worked with people from brain surgeons to CEOs to railroad workers, no matter who the person is, they have this message in some capacity, I'm not good enough. Mm. And when we can come back to that essence that is us, that essence is beyond good enough. And so I think that's, that's one of the pieces, Jen, that I really help people to do is let's do, and, and honestly, people make it really difficult and it's much more simplistic, the mechanism for, for getting there. Yeah. And it's literally, I mean, you can do very simplistic meditation. One of my favorite meditations to do, I start my clients off, literally it's 10 minutes and it's five minutes of sitting on the floor with your back either against the couch, or you could do it if you prefer that your back against the wall. And all you're doing is you're breathing down mm-hmm. literally into your rear end and your legs where you yeah. where you connect with the floor. So you're just grounding yourself in your own energy. And when you start to have a thought, you just take a deep breath and you might do a Kegel or you might just feel yeah. back into that place. And mm-hmm. so you're grounding And the last five minutes, I have people set an alarm. So they do that just for five minutes. And then the next five minutes, you lie in what in yoga they call Shavasana, which is where you lie flat on your back with your palms up to the sky. And in that place, it doesn't matter. Whatever thoughts come are fine. You're just integrating whatever showed up. And it's a beautiful practice of how to be in that present moment. And it gets us in touch with that essence that is us. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's wonderful. I love, I love your uh, term excavation or peeling, you know, I, I mean, I'm thinking peeling away the layers, but I love that terminology of excavation that, you know, the spark is it's down there. It's not that we have to light it, create it. It's already there. It exists, but we just have to uncover it. Right. And figure out, figure out what is, it's sort of like digging for diamonds, right? You, they're there they're there, right? You just have to go and get them. Okay. So, you know, so there's this process, you know, to sort of um, center yourself, figure, you know, get a sort of a clean slate. And I'm sure there's more pieces to it as well, but Mm -hmm. then how do you help people realize or actualize is the word you use, you know, like actualize their vision, 
um, a lot of people don't have vision. I mean, I, I'm speaking as a coach, you know, so for those of you listening, mm. you know, obviously you may have vision, uh, you, you know, whatever the case may be, but, but as a coach, I think a lot of people don't have vision. And um, from my perspective, uh, and you actually said it, it's an inside job, you know, it's the difference between inspiration and motivation. Motivation is exterior. You, you need to go get motivated. Someone needs to motivate you. Uh, versus inspiration, it's just that inside job. And I say that all the time, <laughs> inspiration is inside. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, when I ask people, what is the vision, people don't really have a lot of vision, at least in business. I would say in business, people don't have a lot of visions. How do we get really clear on what it is? It seems like it's out there, but it's kind of fuzzy and it's segmented. And, you know, how do you just kind of pull it all together? Yeah. You know, I think one of the essential pieces is first, it's to me, I always think of ourselves like we are conduits. Mm -hmm. So I like to think of myself like I'm a conduit for as much love and healing as can possibly come through. And so there's times where I have to clear out the cobwebs. Yeah. And and so part of doing that, I think, is we have to be in touch with first, and this sounds maybe counterintuitive, but before you can create what you want again out here. It's what are my limiting beliefs and what are the things getting in the way of even that vision in here? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's a process I, I take people through is, is literally what I call a prosperity mindset, um, where it's not just financial prosperity. Yes. It's emotional abundance. It's, you know, it's, it's a j- abundance of joy that they want to experience in their life. Yeah. And so we, we go through the several different categories whether it's, you know, it can can be your finances, relationships, Mm self-talk, friendships, all of the pillars, spirituality, the whole, yeah, our whole person concept. Mm -hmm. And then we look at all those different areas. And from there, once, once someone has a picture of what they don't want and what's getting in the way, Mm -hmm. we can really start looking at, okay, what would you like to believe instead and that's, that's an exercise I love doing with people, Jen, is having them really start looking at, even if I don't believe it right now, I'm going to write, I have them write like a day in the life, mm-hmm. already being yeah. in gratitude. Mm-hmm. So if I am, if what I want is peace and love and connection and, you know, my career to get going, then I'm, I write about it saying, I am so grateful and thankful. And you can do it to source or the universe or whoever that higher power is for you. So, you know, dear God, I'm so grateful and thankful that I get to wake up in the morning with my beloved, that I have such an amazing partner and I feel energized and excited to go to work every morning. And I'm doing things that not only inspire others, but they inspire me. I, you know, I, I'm enjoying my healthy, fit body. I feel vibrant, alive. So this is just, you know, off yeah. the top of my head, yeah. just an example. And they say it out loud every morning. Yeah. Um, and what, what I've just found out about a month ago or so in, in my own research is they're finding that when we say our affirmations to music, that they actually, we're able to assimilate them at a 38% higher level than when we just say them, because we have this slippery slope brain that can say, oh, that's not true. Oh, or, yeah. I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. And somehow when we're listening to music, we don't have that same voice show up. Huh. Interesting. So so it, yeah, it's really it, interesting. What kind of music? Are you talking meditation music or just whatever somebody likes? It can be whatever someone likes. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, I invite people to listen to something that doesn't have words. Yeah. It can have whatever beat. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I laugh when I do it myself because I, what I love right now, I'm really into these uh, kind of tribal beats. Yeah. And yeah. so I just love it. I say my affirmations to that in the morning and I just feel, and my gratitude's really just enlivened and, and just vibrant from the music. So I think it's, it's this kind of duality of how do we infuse the message and feeling good? Yeah. I love that. I love that statistic. I think that's beautiful. You know, you reminded me of Hal Elrod who wrote uh, Miracle Morning. He's been on this show And, um, you know, he struggled with cancer and his, you know, daily affirmations are, you know, he agree, he feels in part of the miracle morning is saying your daily affirmations out loud, not just internalizing because then your inside brain goes, that's crazy. So saying it out loud. Um, and he overcame stage four cancer. 
you know, just using, I mean, he, ha- he was in the hospital and everything, but there's these affirmations of keeping positive and being grateful for everything that he had. And they truly said, you're, you're not going to survive. And he has survived and, and then some, right? Uh, so, I mean, it's such a powerful thing. I also like that you said, um, and, and you didn't say it this way, so I'm paraphrasing, it's a process of elimination and not selection to come up with your vision, which is something that I talk about with my clients all the time, or what are your core values? And People will say to me, um, family, you know, as if it's a question, well, I don't know, is it a conviction or not? You know? And so if you don't like on people being dishonest, then honesty is a core value. If you like, you don't like people who aren't accountable to something, then accountability is, is a core value. And so I love that you're doing a process of elimination rather than selection to discern, you know, what is it that I want you know, in my life. So, um, so tell us about uh, the spark igniting your best life. If someone to pick, were to pick up that book, because I know that's a book that you've already published and, and grab that book. Um, and, it, and we'll have the, the link to it and all of all of that. But tell us a little bit about that book and what people will walk away with if they were to pick up this book, what will they learn from it? Sure. sure. I, I think that, you know, I think one of the essential pieces in that book is learning part of it is how our mind works and I have lots of different examples and and in that book I also have experts from all my interviews as well so it's you know I'm, I'm using my own words and I'm also borrowing the wisdom and knowledge from other people that have researched those particular places and you know it was Rick Hansen who is a phenomenal uh psychologist who talked about how we have the brain's natural negativity bias Uh And so part of what you learn is how do I make things stick? What I call, how do we give positive experiences stickability? Yeah. Because negative experiences are Velcro in the brain and positive experiences are like fried eggs on a Teflon pan and they slide right off. Mm -hmm. And so you really learn some of these arts of how do I marinate is what I love that word on the positive. How do I get that in my filing system that usually only files what I need to be aware of that could be a threat? Yeah. Yeah. Because the rest of your subconscious just walks around not really feeling, yeah, the positive things. Exactly. So it it truly, I talk about the prosperity mindset in there. I also talk about how do we build resiliency and grit? And this was pre-COVID. So Mm -hmm. it's really interesting how it's so apropos now yeah. Um, the strategies and, and the different things. There's um, a chapter on growing through grief mm-hmm. and how our grief journey is one of the most essential things that we can actually give ourselves permission to grow through. Yeah. Instead um, of instead of pausing life and waiting till the feeling is there to take action. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and to really allow it to be your own journey and not let anyone else dictate what it is for you because we yeah. each grieve in a very different way. Yeah. So it's, there's, there's a lot of, you know, that I would say it's trying to give everyone resources in, in certain areas and those areas, Jen, that we just talked about, yeah. whether it's, you know, finances or whether it's your relationship, there's a chapter on revving up your relationship Mm-hmm. and ways in which we can communicate open-heartedly how do we truly connect mm-hmm. so the spark is really how do I ignite the sparks within me within my relationship and when those sparks feel dulled or like we said they start feeling covered up how do I excavate those yeah. and at the end of every chapter I have the five top takeaways which are kind of like yeah. you can revisit that and say okay these are the essential pieces I want to make sure that I'm addressing. Yeah, good. And then um, are there any action items, anything that people can take action on? As far as exercises? Yeah, and... exercises, things that they could do. Yes, okay. absolutely. Good. So it's chock full of exercises. Okay, whether good. It's, you know, breathing <laughs> exercises or journaling exercises. And so, yeah, that I think, and it's really that book for me, Jill, was like, I wrote it in the most simple language, if you will, yeah. because I wanted it to be absolutely accessible. I wanted it to be exactly that, that people could pick it up. They could just read one chapter and get something from that and have practical activities and exercises that they could implement in their life now. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Love it. Okay. So let's talk about your new book that's coming out in June. So as we're recording this, it's beginning of May. 
in 2022, but it's coming out it shortly. So tell us, tell us a little bit about that book. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. Again, you know, I have to share with you, serendipity has been such a huge part of my life. And I was being interviewed a little over a year ago now on Karen Curry Parker's uh, podcast. And as she asked me at the end of that podcast, well, what are you looking forward to? And I said, well, I think a new, another book is coming through because right. I keep stopping at a stoplight and having to write things on pieces of paper <laughs> and I keep getting these ideas. Yeah. And at the end of that interview, when we got off the actual recording, she said, well, ironically, I need to tell you, my business partner and I own a publishing company and we'd be interested in publishing your second book. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so that was so exciting. And the, it was just one of those things where, again, I feel like I have a lot of divine help in things. And the title and the outline came to me, I mean, right after a meeting with Michelle, uh, who is the other partner. And so the name Becoming Fierce, Living a Bold and Beautiful Life. And that it is, I love it. It's to me, it's like the next level of what the spark began. So it takes things to just a deeper level. And I share a lot more of my own journey in that book. Because I think that that's an essential piece that as we've gone through our own trials and tribulations, I think we can better inspire other people. They can do the same. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, my first book launch, uh, it was really the first time that I was vulnerable in the business world, you know, to share what I had gone through the trials and tribulations, you know, as a child. Um, and people, you know, came to me and said, oh my gosh, I, I needed to hear that. I needed to see that. That was me. I, now I know it's possible, you know, like all of those, those things. And I think we tend to hold those back, but I, I love, um, uh, being fierce. And I, and I do think that this is the next step for, you know, after, after, um, the spark igniting your best life, it's like, okay, so now I've got my life in line and I'm heading in the right direction, but now I'm going to be bold and I'm going to be fierce with it and no one's going to get in my way. So I love that. And so that's coming out in June. When is that coming out in June? Roughly well, it'll, Beginning it'll end? Be towards the end of June. And it's actually coming out at the, the same time that I'm doing a becoming fierce women's empowerment event. Oh, okay. Good. The park. Okay. And that's, I, it's, it's really exciting because we're filming that oh, um, wonderful. with Anna Dara and Film Nest for a six part series on Plex Network. Okay. So really excited. I mean, when we have people, Natalie Ledwell and Pauline Wen, who the Huffington Post said was the most spiritually grounded entrepreneur on the planet. Natalie Ledwell has done all the work with Joe Dispenza okay. and Mind Movies. Mm -hmm. Sadina Caponelli, who is just an amazing woman who does a PBS on Ageless Living, Misa Hopkins, Cynthia James, Dr. Kari um, Schaefer. It's going to be just an amazing, amazing event. Very intimate, only 26 women, although right now there are still tickets available. And it really is to help women find their voice, find their strength. And yeah. really, you know, truly be able to come forth, like, what does it mean to truly cultivate this loving relationship with me? And how do I get in touch with being a full expression of myself in the world? Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, so as we, as we finish up our time here today, uh, tell us a little bit about a quote or a mantra or an affirmation. You know, you've already given us one quote. <laughs> one quote, which is great. But what other uh, quotes do you live by or do you uh, rely on on a regular basis? Quotes or saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, interestingly, I think Viktor Frankl always comes to mind his book, Man's Search for Meaning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was an Auschwitz survivor. And that book is so powerful. One of, one of his quotes is, they can take anything from us but our choice to our choice for our own attitude to choose our own way. Yeah. And, and to me, that's like, no matter what's going on around us, we don't have to be in reactivity. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I want to be a person who is responding to life and responding in love to those around me. So that, that quote to me has always been such, such a powerful one on, on how we can show up and how we can be in the world. 
Yeah. And that really increases emotional intelligence too. And we know that emotional intelligence, you know, helps us be happier people. It helps us financially. There's all kinds of great um, ancillary benefits to having emotional intelligence, you know, and I love that you're saying, you know, respond versus react uh, because there's so much of that reaction going on now politically around the world, (laughs) at least in the United States, but there is so much reaction happening. So I love that. Um, So last, last few words, what would you like to leave? our listeners with? I think I would just, I I want people to know that they can actually do whatever it is that they put their minds to and not in some kind of just, you know, um, what am I trying to say? It's, It's something that is actually, it's just not an idea. It's something that people can actually, as they open up to the truth within them, which is that they are already enough, that that essence that is them is fully alive and fully lit up they can begin to create what they truly want in their lives. And we can do things, we can heal the gaps between us. We can do these different things where we're learning how, what is true power? It's not power over someone, it's how do we become empowered so that we can truly connect. And that I, I have to say too, you know, I think about the Beatles saying, you know, love is all there is. I know there's lots of other things out there. And at our essence, that is who we are. Yeah. So when we really do this work and continue to clear that conduit, we can become through focusing on our own healing. I think one of my biggest messages is your healing matters. Because yeah. as we each do that healing, then we become the pebble in the pond and the concentric circles of healing radiate out from us and come back to us. And I think that's how we make substantial change in the world. Oh, that's beautiful. Great, great thing to end on. And so how do people get in touch with you, Stephanie? What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? They can go to my website, which mm-hmm. is stephaniejames.world. Mm-hmm. And they can find me, Stephanie the Spark, on Instagram or Facebook. And absolutely can email me directly at stephanie the spark at gmail.com and i'm just absolutely thrilled to connect with any of your listeners okay sounds wonderful well thank you so much for being here i really appreciate it it's a new sense a new thought process that i'll probably have today and i love that this is grounding my morning because this is my first call today i love that it's grounding my morning uh you know to really get me through the day today so thank you so much i really really appreciate you and appreciate you Uh, coming on. And it's been a pleasure to get to know you better. You and Morgan, I think are great. And I can't wait to see you when we get out to Denver sometime in the fall this year. I'm 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 excited. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. So everybody, thank you so much again for listening in. If this is your first time, thank you. um, And welcome to the community. I hope you enjoyed this, this episode. And if you've been listening for a while, thank you so much for your continued support. And I just encourage you and ask you to please give us a five-star rating and write a review. Take a few minutes to do that. And make sure you're subscribing to this podcast so that you don't miss any episodes. And with that, we'll let you go and see you next time on Success to Significance.